So welcome to the spring meeting of the Lunar Surface Innovation Consortium. My name is Rachel Klima. I'm the director uh, of ELSIC. I have a couple quick announcements. Number one, today and tomorrow, please remember, do not share any ITAR sensitive information. First and foremost, right, this is a um, international conference. We have folks from all over the place tuning in. Please be careful about that. Um, if you're here in the room, the bathrooms are outside just beyond the, um, the posters, which are on the right and the left. If you are in building 200, um, we invite you to come over during the breaks. We want people to mingle. I hope that um, if there's anyone in here that's like doesn't love how busy it is, there is overflow over there with tables and power and all kinds of great things and even snacks as well. So I encourage everyone to try to mingle between the buildings during breaks and um, allow everyone a chance to network together. But we had quite a few people sign up and we didn't want to turn people away because um, we think it's really important for the community to get together. So I appreciate everyone's patience with this um, very much. If anyone needs to nurse, um, or not nurse, I guess you probably don't have babies, but <laughs> if you need a mother's room, uh, we have one in Building 200 we can get you access to. There's a uh, gender neutral, fragrance free, and handicapped bathroom here outside. Um, please be careful of tripping hazards. We do have power along the floor here. Look out for that. Um, and finally, um, we have a couple of uh, addendums to the printed program. One is a, uh, just a little error, which you should catch. On day two, it says mountain time, which it's not mountain time. That was just from using the format from last year. Um, and our speaker in this afternoon, we have a swap of speakers um, for Dr. Asan Chaudhry. We have um, MD Rahman speaking instead. And then we'll have a couple new additions tomorrow that I will announce at that time. So I would like to introduce um, Bobby Braun, the head of our space sector here at APL to um, welcome everyone to APL. So thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the, enjoy the show. Uh, good morning. There's like 300 people here. You could do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Uh, welcome to APL and welcome to the ELSIC uh, spring meeting. It is great uh, for, to see so many people here. We've got over 300 people uh, who registered and who are coming in person and several hundred more online. Uh, this is by far the largest meeting that ELSIC has ever had and we're super excited. Uh, to have you all here and, and for the conversations that are going to occur. You know, it's not just the presentations themselves, but it's the networking time um, and it's the conversations that occur in the hallways or in the margins where a lot of innovation occurs. And so we're very, very happy and pleased to have you all here. Uh, uh, what I wanted to say up front is just a little bit about APL and then uh, some thoughts. Um, so whether we're talking about science, uh, technology, or national security, uh, APL is very proud to be a part of making critical contributions to our nation's return to the moon. We've got the largest collection of lunar scientists anywhere in the world. Uh, we're presently integrating the Lunar Vertex mission just a, a few hundred meters north of here where Lunar Outpost uh, rover was recently delivered. And we're you know, integrating the science payloads for that PRISM mission, which is going to fly on Eclipse Lander uh, to the moon very, very soon. Uh, Lunar Trailblazer, which is a mission uh, led by Bethany Elman at Caltech. You know, Rachel uh, is the deputy principal investigator for that. Uh, we're making a number of ongoing contributions through Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter still today. Uh, we have our annual uh, CIS Lunar Security Conference, which keeps getting bigger uh, every year uh, and is kind of the meeting place for the national security community interested in CIS Lunar Space. Uh, and of course, uh, LSII and ELSIC that you're all a part of and are here for uh, that we organize on behalf of the Space Technology Mission Directorate uh, at NASA. And so the moon is a big part of who we are at APL. And uh, once again, we're very, very happy to welcome you all here uh, from across the country, from across the world, uh, to be a part of, the, of this activity. Uh, I was um, 
you know, thinking about this event over the weekend, and I wanted to uh, just put something out there for you to think about. Maybe during the breaks you could talk about this a little bit. Uh, maybe it's a conversation starter for a few of you, but uh, let me give you a little bit of history. Um, on April 5th, uh, 1950, uh, several of the nation's top scientists met uh, in the living room of James Van Allen. At the time, James Van Allen was on the staff of the Applied Physics Laboratory. And they had a vigorous scientific discussion. And one of the things that came out of that discussion in 1950, that the time was right to have an international geophysical year. Uh, and so a few years later, they worked that idea. And they took it through the various science councils around the world. And a few years later, in 1952, that concept of an international geophysical year was ratified uh, by what is now, uh, at that time, it was called the International Union of Science Councils, but today it's just called the International Science Council. This was a grassroots, community-led idea uh, that was adopted around the world. It was modeled on the international polar years that had occurred in 1982, uh, sorry, 1882, and 1932. And the international polar years were put together, of course, to get scientists from across the globe to study the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. Uh, and from that, the International Geophysical Year sprung. And when it was uh, announced in 1952, it was put in place from July 1 of 57 to the end of 58 to coincide with the solar cycle maximum. And of course, you all know that 57 to 58 was a huge time uh, for the space program. 67 countries from around the globe participated in international geophysical year uh, projects in that time frame, including the launch uh, of the first satellites by the Soviet Union and by the United States, and discovery of the what became the Van Allen radiation belts. Right. So. Take that idea and, and thinking forward, thinking about why we're all here today. You know, the 70th anniversary of the International Geophysical Year is not too far in the future. It would be July 1st, 27, to December 31st of 28, when that 70th anniversary would come about. And think about what we'll be doing in that time frame. In fact, think about where we'll be in terms of science and economic activities and national security activities, commercial activities at the moon in just a decade, in just a few short years, really. You know, today more than 20 nations have signed the Artemis Accords. A host of nations and organizations, government and otherwise, uh, will be conducting science, economic activities, technology activities in cislunar space and on the lunar surface. Uh, by 27, 28, uh, lunar, a lunar trailblazer will have completed its primary mission. Uh, Viper will have completed its mission. Many of the things we talk about today in the science world will be moving on to the next. NASA will have already landed the first woman and person of color on the lunar surface. Uh, the gateway will be up. Uh, Artemis IV will uh, likely be underway, and NASA will be moving to a cadence a much higher cadence of humans exploring the moon. The international community will be going to the moon in this time frame. So a proposition for you, you know, perhaps this time, this time frame, July 1st of 27 through the end of 28, which would coincide with the 70th anniversary of the International Geophysical Year, perhaps that should be designated the International Lunar Year. And perhaps this group, should take that to the various science councils around the world and champion that idea and see if we can make it happen. The International Geophysical Year did not happen because a particular government dictated that it would happen. It happened because of grassroots support from people just like you, people that are assembled for this event. So I wanted to throw out that idea, get, this, get the meeting started with a, you know, a kind of a thought uh, and get you talking about something. There's probably other ideas that are better than this one, maybe, but just wanted to get you started there. So thanks for uh, humoring me on that.